So I'm looking at both of the projects side by side and uh, I'm going to change a couple of things. Again, it's going to work with doc type in capitals or in lowercase, doesn't matter, but I'm going to change that to lowercase just because that's what I've had before. Either way, it should work. Um, there's actually even a debate which is the right one because some documentation says capitals, some documentation says lowercase. And so I'm going to put it lowercase. Uh, the other stuff looks the same, except if you look closely, you'll see on line 5, line 5 of the DIR file at the end says maximum scale equals 1, and we don't have that on our index. And ours was working just fine, but this is a little bit more of a sort of a, a guarantee that you can't zoom in and out. Even though we've already got user scalable no, which in theory should lock us down that we can't zoom in zoom out, maximum scale is another thing that kind of prevents the possibility of zooming in and out. So actually in that case I want to add that from the DIR file to our file. So notice on line 5 I want to copy the comma and then maximum dash scale equals 1. I want to copy that or you can type it manually. On line 5 at the end, user scalable no comma maximum dash scale equals one and all of that is inside of that angle bracket that again is preventing the zooming in the zooming out uh, line six and seven are the same line eight this says geo and ours is empty this doesn't need to say anything, and if we write something, it'll get erased anyway. jQuery Mobile takes over the title anyway to display what we want it to. So this is moot. You can leave it alone. You can change it. I'll just leave it. Line 9 has a link to a style sheet. Uh, on our line 9 of my index file, there's an empty space there. So if that doesn't line up, that's okay. But I'm looking on line 12, and there's a reference to jQuery Mobile 145. We will fix that one on the DIR file because that one is pointing to jQuery Mobile 140 on the server. So I'm going to, in the DIR file, now be careful, we're working with two separate files. In the DIR file, I'm going to cut that down just to jQuery Mobile 145. Take out the whole HTTP stuff and just lead it, let leave it pointing to the jQuery mobile file like we have on line 12 of the index file. You can just copy and paste it also. But now line 9 has been upgraded to the newer jQuery mobile. I'm going to skip a little bit. Line 12 of the DIR file also has a reference to the old jQuery mobile. That one also needs to be updated. So line 12 of the DIR file. Same thing. Change its source so that it simply points to jQuery mobile 1.4.5.min.js. So now those two lines look like the same lines that I've got in the index file. Line 11 we're going to leave alone. Line 11 points to jQuery 172. Which version are we using? 214. Our line 18 says 214. Well, why don't we update it? Because the version of the jQuery of the Google Maps that we're using doesn't quite work with the newest version of jQuery. So we're going to keep it on jQuery 172. We're going to keep it as the online version of it because anyway you need to have an you need to have an internet connection for the map to work. So either way, uh, we, we're going to leave it like this. What we could do is download version 172 and then leave it as the local version. Uh, but uh, we'll leave it like this because later on when we talk about making this an app, we can check is there network connectivity. If there's no network connectivity, don't even show the map feature. 
then it's, it's not even going to help us. So for the moment, we'll leave line 11 alone. Line 15 we have to leave alone because that connects over to the Google server. Notice this is not connecting to a specific JavaScript file. We're kind of hiding it or obfuscating it. You might hear that. Obfuscated code. Just a fancy way of saying hidden code. So we're connecting over to the JavaScript file on the Google server to be able to use the whole map functionality. So we have to leave that one alone. We cannot download a local copy. Everything in the script from line 16 to 100 is fine, so just skip all the way down. We need to take a moment to update some of these uh, older bits of code. We're using the newer HTML5 semantics, remember? So we've got, I'm going to make a note here, line 104 down to 121. Includes a div data role page, which we know should actually be what HTML tag? Section. Let's check. Let's change section div into section on line 104 and line 121. It's pair to slash section. So lines, lines 104 and 121. That one is section. We've got line 105 and 107, data role header, which, what's our headers? Header, that one's easy. So header, slash header. Line 108 down to 120 is our data role content. What's our HTML5 tag for content? Article. The other items inside of the content, the other divs, are fine. Generic placeholders, divs, so that they can display the contents of our map and display the directions. So those divs in there are fine. But what we've done is we've updated the semantic elements and we've also updated the jQuery, we've let, uh, the jQuery mobile. We've updated the jQuery mobile and we've left alone the jQuery and the Google JavaScript. If I save and run this, nothing should change, hopefully. It should still look the same and behave the same as before. It's just that we've been updated internal stuff. Yeah. If something looks weird, you might have changed a little too much. What's that? In Firefox? It's not popping up anymore? Well, uh, we'll probably be fine for the moment. Let's just move on. Did it work previously? Uh, it did before we took break. OK. So just for the moment, we'll go on, and then we'll check the, uh, the details. Um, this dir file, we are going to keep it separate. We could copy and paste this stuff into our index file. We would have to make a, you know, a, new, a new little section for it. We'd have to then copy and paste this JavaScript into our JavaScript file. We could do that. I'm going to keep this separate, though. I'm going to keep the dir file as a separate, complete entity. This all works on its own, enclosed within the dir file. I'm going to do that just to show that we have a couple of options. We don't have to keep everything in one HTML file. We can keep them separate. If we choose to do that, then we have certain concerns here and there that we have to address. So that's why I want to cover both of those bases. Sometimes you do want a separate file, and I'm going to tell you what things need to change when it's a separate file. 
so the we need a link we need a link from the index file to this dir file that link is going to exist in the about in the about pop-up box of the index file so in our index file we need to find that it's at about line 264 somewhere there you're going to see SDCE is committed to etc you're going to see the section data roll page ID about there's our pop-up box about section and I want to have two buttons I have two buttons. One button is going to have uh, to get directions, and later on we'll talk about the customization of uh, accepting a person's name. Uh, so what I want here is uh, two buttons side by side. Uh, so one way we could do it is using the grid that we've done before. If you back up just a little bit, uh, I'm on line 200 and, uh, 264. If you back up just a little bit to about line 239, there's a there should be our placeholder grid. So I want to get a copy of that. Copy that div. That's a placeholder with four cells, a grid with four cells. Copy that and we'll paste it into our pop-up box. So we'll paste it uh, on line 265, above the end of the div of center, paste in that grid, because on this grid here we'll have one button, and on that grid we'll have another button, I mean that cell. <coughs> inside of line 267, which is inside of that div, inside of that cell, uh, we'll write um, get directions. That will be a button that will jump us over to the DIR page. So we've seen this before. This is going to be a button. It's going to be a link. So we'll attach the A tag, href. Let's just set it to the dummy link for the moment. We'll put the right one in a moment. Um, data role button data icon I think it's called nav or maybe navigation let's try navigation that should give us that little uh, that little compass pointer icon it's either navigation or nav uh, save it and run it and we should see in our about screen now a new button that we will finish writing to take us to the dir file with a couple of uh, wrinkles that we have to iron out when we link to external content Let's see, I'm going to save and run that. All I really want to see about about, I click the button, I've got one of the buttons there. This doesn't do anything yet, but I have the icon, I have get directions, so I'm on my way. That's my code so far. It's a, it's a link, it's a button. So what we need to do here is the href is going to be, instead of the dummy link, dir.html. And we've seen before that when we link to external content, we also have to add one extra property here. So right after href, we will add rel equals. We saw that when we linked over to the, what was it, the, uh, the, ca uh, the catalog, the school's catalog. 
we were going over to an external site. In a sense, this is also external because it's going from one HTML file to another. So we would have rel equals external. Now save it and run it. You should have your button. You should click on the button, and now the page will load up dir HTML. Let's see. So I'm going to run that. Go to about SDCE. There's my button. I'm going to click it. There's a DIR file asking for directions. We know this works. We've looked at it extensively. We have the project. Great. Okay, now I want to go back to my app. Uh, there's no back button. Okay, so we'll deal with going back to our app. But there's a problem here. The back button that we've seen previously would work because we were within one index HTML file. We were within one file where we could easily jump from section to section of our, in, of our index file. What we've done here is we've left the confines of our index file to go to a DIR file. So a back button, like we've seen before, won't quite work. What we're going to do is tap into the built-in history of the web browser via JavaScript to take us back one point in history. So we need to edit the DIR file to create a button right here and to take us back one point in history. Go back to Notepad and we'll edit the DIR file. Down on line 106, give yourself a new line above directions because I want a button before the word directions. If I added it after directions, it could appear on the right side. I want a button before directions, so uh, we'll write back. And we've seen that we make buttons by adding the A tag. So we'll write something like that for the moment. This is in the header of the DIR file, line 107. Line 106. Now if I save it and run it, just to check if I'm on the right track. If I run from the index about SDCE, get directions, that pops up, there's my back button. I didn't have to write data role equals button. The thing about jQuery Mobile is that it will assume this is a button if you add a link in the header, because it sort of assumes what else would be up there but buttons. So notice a little time saver for us. We did not have to write data role equals button. We still have to write, however, data role equals icon, so that we can get an icon. Data dash icon equals, uh, let's do caret c-a-r-a-t dash l. That's an l, not a number one. It means left, caret left, an arrow pointing to the left. Oh, yes, that's right. Data icon. Good eye. Data icon. So if I check this, I'm going to run the index, get directions. There we go. It's got an icon. Doesn't do anything yet. What comes next is okay. Um, I could, one way to do this is, I could put here index.html. Don't put index.html. This is one way to do it. 
but this is again this is hard coding it meaning uh, the only way that this will work ever is that it'll go back to index maybe that's what we want but what if we get to this about screen from the computer's screen then this would always take me back to the index instead of to the computer's screen I want something more robust I want it to take me back to the place where I came from not arbitrarily always back to index so we will not hard code that but it always goes back to index we want to use some JavaScript as I said JavaScript is very powerful it's got a lot of features that we can tap into one of them is we can tap into the history of the web browser we can make it go back in history one step five steps whatever we can make it go forward in history we can tap all of that in into via JavaScript so here's how we'll do it instead still inside of the angle brackets of the a tag add a brand new on click we saw that before when we were playing a little bit with JavaScript on click equals quotes so here's another event uh, event handler what happens when there is a click on this button some JavaScript and the JavaScript is going to be something called history dot so now we're take we're now we're paying attention to the history object previously we had document dot something console dot something maybe window dot something later we'll see navigator dot something actually we saw navigator dot something with uh, the GPS didn't we here we've got history dot back open close parentheses semicolon so we're saying just take us back one level one space in history wherever we came from just take us back one history spot save it and run it well save and run the index file because if you run the dir file there's no history to go back to run the index file then go to this page then you have history to go back let's see so index about get directions close that back button press back back where we came from in history so going back to my code that's my uh, that's my code there I've got I've got a link no hard-coded href value we have the dummy link instead make it behave like a link but don't do go anywhere and we make it go back via history via JavaScript I have to look it up exactly but then I believe inside of the parentheses we can put like minus two and it takes us back to I have to look it up exactly what the terminology is I forgot but um, there is a way to make it go back two spots in history seven spots whatever but I'm just saying go back wherever you came from Uh, which part? Just that. That's the uh, that's the usual link there. Do you have rel external? It's navigation exactly. The word navigation. You're welcome. So this is. Um, the big idea for today that uh, we explored on our own a bit of HTML geolocation navigator dot get location or whatever it was called and then we used that knowledge to then start with a starting point to create you know uh, an item here and then we linked and here I did it in a way of external content because sometimes you need to do this and if you do link to external files, remember to have rel external. Did you notice that when you went from this file to the other, you didn't have an animation? I put in an animation of pop, it did not pop. It will ignore the animations. 
So when you go from one HTML file to another, data transitions will not work. Okay, not a big deal, but something to be aware of. And so at this point, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going we're gonna to end the lecture in just a moment. But we've got now our app coming together much more. We've still got one more bit of JavaScript I want to do next time, which uh, I want another button here that will uh, ask for the person's name and then display the name throughout the app. We kind of have the knowledge right now to do that. But the problem is any variable that we create is temporary. As soon as we close the web browser, it'll forget your name. So when you load the project again, it won't remember your name. We're going to use a new HTML feature called local storage. So if you want to start getting a preview of it, we'll do it together, of course. But if you look up HTML5 local storage, one word or two, doesn't shouldn't matter, storage, HTML5 local storage, you'll probably get a result from W3Schools. Maybe look at that on your own. We're going to look at it together. But local storage is a way to save data more permanently, kind of like a cookie, but better for the new generation. It will save just about any kind of data that we want. It'll save it within the file itself, kind of, technically in the web browser. And therefore, if you put in your name, we close the file, open it again a week later, it'll still remember your name. When we get to the point of making it an app, we're going to use that concepts like that to save data in a database. Eventually we're going to be able to save like a list of classes that we want to take and other notes and such. We'll be able to save that in our app. Local storage could be a way to do that. We'll do that together on Thursday, but you can explore it on your own. We're going to look at specifically the W3Schools lesson. I'm going to put my files in the network folder in just a moment. Any general questions on things we talked about today? I want to show you one more thing and then we'll wrap up. All of this code that we're writing here, you have a copy of it on your drive or you might get a copy of it from my network folder and such. But there's a couple of places that I want to make you aware of that might be useful to you regarding code. One is um, if you open up a web browser, let's check out this, app, this website. Um, Livecoding.tv The video is going to play there, so you might want to pause that. Livecoding.tv Watch People Code Products live. Now what's popular nowadays, of course, is video, but what's even what's getting perhaps a little more popular is live video. Has anyone used the, the app Periscope? Um, has anyone ever used Twitch or Justin.tv or any of those? Those are websites that allow you to share, or maybe Ustream. Those are websites and apps that allow you to share stuff live. Here's a website where people set themselves up coding live for you to watch them. So people here, uh, you can go look at streams, browse streams. People right now, this person right here, whiteboard algorithm, website from scratch. Let's go check out this guy. He's got 5,000 views. So this guy right here, live, I think you have to create an account first. But, uh, it's free. So this guy right here, he's got, uh, he's coding, he's right there. If you sign up, you can actually chat and ask him questions. This is real, this is not pre-recorded. Uh, you can subscribe to people when their next lesson is coming out and so forth. And so, uh, people for free are showing you what they're doing, what they're working on. I have an account here too, that I'm putting stuff once in a while. If you want to know about it, you can go to livecoding.tv slash campus. And so what I've got there is uh, just playing with jQuery again from scratch. I put together a, a recipe kind of app that I'm playing with. 
You can see all the code from beginning to end. It lasts about two hours, two hours and 20 minutes. But you can see it from beginning to end. And if you get an account here for free, you see right here, past broadcasts. Uh, you, can, you can go in and ask questions. You can look at the original code. I have a link to it right here on my GitHub repo. That's the second thing I want to show you. GitHub.com is a place where people then share their code. So the code of what I created right here in this video is on that link. You can download all the code, you can modify it, you can change it. No problem. I put it out there for people to use, to do whatever they want with it. GitHub.com is a place for people to share their code. If you follow that link, you will see the finished code of what I did in the video. You can check what you did, what I did. It's all right here. You can look at it right there. You can also see what it actually looks like live on your web browser. I don't know if I put it any link anywhere there, but it's at VMC INK.net slash recipe. Recipe or recipes? Recipes. No, recipe. VMCInk.net slash recipe. What I created in that video, that code that I'm giving away on GitHub, it's right here live. It's not fully functional yet, but this is my idea of, make, of my next app, which is going to be a little recipe kind of app. It's all based on jQuery Mobile, what you're learning in this class, stuff we haven't talked about yet. For example, look up ingredients. This is real. You can start to search and it'll show you ingredients, recipes, recipe one. It's going to be an app eventually. It's a web project, but it's an app at the, uh, it's, it's going to be an app, but it's a web project at the moment. It's going to have a, a video that you can watch about how to prepare the recipe, for example. All of the stuff that we've done together, basically. vmcinc.net slash recipe. The code is at github.com slash vmcampos, blah, blah, blah. GitHub.com slash VMCampus. And then my uh, my uh, live coding is at livecoding.tv slash VMCampus. What I'm saying right now also is being recorded in the lecture video, so if you watch the lecture video later, it's in the video. And I can give it to you also if you uh, send me an email. So I wanted to make you aware of those two things, livecoding.tv and github.com. And I'll mention GitHub again uh, uh, next time because it's very useful to save your code there so that you never lose it and so that you can collaborate with people and have them help you do your work and all of that stuff.